Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be doing a cool little um, fade material here. You can see as we get closer to this object, we can see more of it based on where the player is. And as we get further away, it fades out of existence. Now, this is something that I showed you guys on a live stream uh, some time ago. Uh, and a few of you have requested that I show you how to put it together. So that's what we're going to do today. It's not going to take too long. It's actually quite a quick process. So we're just going to delete everything that's doing stuff. And there we go. So let's begin. The first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need to make ourselves a material parameter collection. So you get that by right clicking in your content browser, materials and textures, and then material parameter collection. We're going to call this player location. And we're going to double click this to open it up. And now we need a vector parameter. And a vector is going to give us three values, although this is going to give us four because it's also going to give us an alpha value. We don't need the alpha value, but we'll get rid of that later on. We're going to call this location. There we are. And we will save that out. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to feed information directly to this. So what we're going to do is open up our level blueprint and we will right click, get our player pawn. And the reason we're getting player pawn is because we need to know where the player is located at all times. So what we're going to do from player pawn is get the actor location. There we are. And what we will now do is drag out from event tick. You don't want to do this with too many things. Event tick is going to call the event every single frame. Uh, seeing as we need to update this in real time, it's going to work for us. But you don't want to put too much on event tick because that is going to slow stuff down. So what we're going to do here is set our vector parameter value. You can see here it's going to be the very top one that we have. If we click this, you're going to get this lovely little box with a couple of drop downs. Now you can either go into the drop down here and find your parameter collection. But if you've got more than one inside of your uh, your project you can type in the name of it or you can just drag it from your content browser straight in there and it will update that for you parameter name you can just click this little drop down and you can see we've got location which is what we've named it any parameters that you put inside of this collection you'll find in the drop down the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drag from our get actor location straight into parameter value and this is going to create a little converter from uh, from a vector into a color. That's all we need to do to update the information that we need. So we're going to press compile, close this down. And now we're going to make the actual material. So we're going to right click material. We'll call this fade underscore M. We'll open this guy up. First thing we're going to do before we do anything is over here under the material options, we're going to change our blend mode to translucent. And this is going to allow us to have an object with varying levels of translucency. That's what we want. We don't want opacity because opacity is either on or off or rather opacity mask is either on or off. We want opacity exactly. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to grab our player location, drag this in and you can see here we've got none over in the left. Under the details, we're going to select our location. Now this will update to location, player, location. Yay! Right click, we need our world position. And the reason we need this is because we want to compare the position of the material to the position of the player character. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a distance. And you'll find this under utility distance. Plug a world position into A. Don't plug location straight into B, however, because as I said earlier, it's a float 4. We need a float 3 because we don't need alpha. Uh, you can see here, the reason we need a 3 is because our coordinates are X, Y, and Z. We don't have a fourth coordinate, so we don't need alpha. So what we're going to do is we're going to component mask out the A. So we're going to make sure that this is just ticked for R, G, and B, which, as you can see here, X, Y, and Z, R, G, B. Plug this into distance. And now we're comparing our player location to the location of our object with the material. But we don't want to do this infinitely. We want to do this within a specific area. So hold D and left click for a divide. Plug the distance into A. Hold S and left click for a scalar parameter. And we're going to call this our sphere mask. We're going to plug this into the B. And we're going to give this a default value of 512, which is what we had in that little example at the beginning. Now, 
one problem that we're going to have here is the values here at some point are going to be higher than one and just other times we're going to have them less than zero. We don't want this at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to clamp these out to make sure that our value is always between zero and one. Because you can't be more opaque than one or less invisible than zero. Otherwise we're going to get weird results. Now the problem we're going to have here is that these are reversed. We need to turn this around a little bit. So right now, if we were to apply this, and then place it onto some of our models, we will more than likely find that our models will be visible except you see here this is zero 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 because it's not getting any information it's going to be visible except for where our player is so it's going to go invisible for where our player is actually located rather than become visible now if that's what you want cool but if you actually want them to appear as your character gets closer what we need to do is after the clamp just hold o and left click that's o the letter o not o as in zero and you'll get a one minus x plug the clamp into the one minus x and then plug this into the opacity and this is going to flip the values Let me compress apply. And now once it's finished doing its thing, you can see here that it's now working. And you see we've got a slightly different effect than what I had at the start, and that's because we haven't actually assigned a color to this, so it's just going to be black by default. Hold three and left click for a three vector. And we can change our color to a more light and smoky gray, which is what we were using at the beginning. We'll close this down, press play, wait for the shader to compile, there we are, and now you can see we're getting a really nice smoky effect as we walk past these objects. So there you go guys, that's how I put together the nice fade material really simple. I wouldn't put too much of this on top of each other if we go into our uh, shader complexity mode. You can see because we are using translucency on translucency, if you stack too much of it on top of each other, it is going to get quite expensive. Uh, on its own, one or two of them you can get away with. But you can see here we're, we're out of range. If we go back to our regular mode, we're out of range of it there. But because it's actually still drawing a translucency of zero, you are still going to be using shader complexity here. So I'd suggest that you create a blueprint that would see uh, if the distance is greater than um, a specific amount, then don't draw the object at all. But there you have it. That's just a, an optimization thing. You're probably not going to need it because, as I say, uh, you're not going to stack too much of this stuff on top of each other, are you? You're not going to make an entire scene out of this. You'd be crazy. You'd be mad. You'd be crazy. Anyway, um, so there you go. That's that's that. Hopefully some of you guys will find that uh, very, very useful. Uh, in the description, you're going to find links to Discord, Patreon, and my Twitch channel. I'm going to start streaming again, uh, hopefully on a daily basis. <laughs> hopefully. Um, and I'd love to have as many of you over there as possible. Uh, I am going to stream on YouTube as well at times, uh, but the main bulk of my streaming is going to be done over on Twitch, just because it's a much friendlier platform for live streaming than YouTubers. But there you go, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.